Hey guys, in this video, we're talking about why the SRAS is upward sloping. And we're going to do a lot more than that. We're going to talk about what shifts the SRAS curve, why the LRAS curve is vertical, and we're talking about the supply curve of a single product. Now, we don't usually do this at the beginning of our videos here at Econ Busters, but this time, I want to say something, guys. Econ Busters, what we're trying to do is bust economics wide open for you. We're trying to make it so that you can deeply understand economics. We're not trying to make it so that, hey, here's a few things to memorize that you can do well on a test. We're trying to give you deep understanding to give you enduring understanding. We kind of think of us as a place that you go if you really want to understand economics. And we think of it as an investment. Yes, it's probably going to take you a little bit longer to watch our videos. Our videos are a little bit longer, 10 to 15 minutes. But if you do that investment, we believe it's going to pay future dividends to you, okay? So we hope that you spend that time with us, 10, 15 minutes, and then you will hopefully deeply understand why the SRAS curve or any other topic that we're doing in a video, uh, and that will help you out long term. Now, let's get to it. Again, we're talking about the SRAS curve. We associate that with the ASAD model. The ASAD model is a model of our macro economy. Aggregate supply is total production. It's really the total production um, of domestic final goods and services. And aggregate demand is total spending. It's the total spending uh, on domestically produced final goods and services. Again, we're looking at the entire macro economy in regards to final goods and services when we're looking at an ASAD model. And we're talking about the short run aggregate supply curve, and that's going to be pivotal, pivotal for why aggregate supply is upward sloping. It's going to be that short run definition, okay? Now, before we get too deep into it, let's just talk generally about what we mean when we say something is upward sloping. When we say something's upward sloping, we say, hey, when the independent variable changes in some direction, let's say it increases, the dependent variable also increases. That's what gives you an upward sloping line. Or if the independent variable decreases, the dependent variable also decreases. There's what we call a direct relationship, right? So, what is the independent variable? It is the price level. So what we're saying is, hey, when that price level goes up, we will produce more. And that's what I have here. I know you might be used to real GDP being here on an ASAD model, but for this video, I just want to put quantity of AS. It is real GDP. It's equivalent to real GDP. The quantity of aggregate supply is what real GDP is, okay? So anyhow, so when the price level goes up, we're going to produce more. So what does that mean when that price level goes up? We, we need a new dot that is above that dot, but we're also going to produce more, so that dot has to be to the right. So there we go. That dot satisfies it, right? It's above and to the right. You connect these two dots, and you get a upward sloping line. And what we want to do is explain why that is. But before I do, I want to talk about the supply of a single product, okay? Now, something we say at Econ Busters, and we say this about both the supply and demand curve, which is slightly different words, is the following. A supply curve is actually a bunch of dots. I hope you see all these dots, right? It's actually a bunch of dots, and those dots lie above goods. There's one dot per good. Every dot lies above a good. And the vertical distance between the good and the dot, the vertical distance between the good and the dot, is the marginal cost of supplying that good. That's what's so important. All, every supply curve is a bunch of dots, and those dots lie above goods, and the vertical distance between the good on the horizontal axis and the dot, that vertical distance, is the marginal cost of supplying that particular good. So important that you understand that supply curves are actual marginal cost curves. And now you bring in the price. Well, what is the price for a particular good? It is the per unit revenue. It's the benefit to the supplier of supplying that good. So how many goods are we going to supply? We will supply all goods for which the per unit revenue, again, which is the price, is above the marginal cost, right? Is above the marginal cost. Now, as soon as the marginal cost exceeds that per unit revenue, which is going to happen here at the 11th good, okay, we won't supply those anymore. Now, if that price goes up, so let's go ahead and show that price going up. So if that price market, that's what the M is for, market, goes up, that per unit revenue goes up, we're going to supply more goods. Why are we going to supply more goods? Well, now the per unit revenue, remember that 11th good, the per unit revenue was below that marginal cost when it was this blue line right here. Now the revenue, the per unit revenue is above the marginal cost we're going to supply it. And the 12th good and the 13th good. The 14th good looks like kind of a wash. The per unit revenue kind of equals that per unit cost. Whether we supply it or not doesn't really matter. It's not uh, 
It's not, we're not going to take on a loss, nor are we going to make profits if we supply that 14th good. But the big point, guys, is, hey, price, a benefit to the supplier goes up. The per unit revenue goes up. We're going to supply more, right? And you can see that movement along the curve, which I'll talk about later when I get to that SRAS shifting, okay? Or supply curve shifting, for that matter. But anyhow, for right now, price goes up. We're producing more. Now, the price level. Well, again, that's the level of prices of all final goods and services. When that price level goes up, I want you to think, hey, revenues to businesses are going up because they are. That's what's happening when the price level goes up. The price level is the level, okay, of prices of final goods and services. If those that price level goes up, that's prices going up. That's revenues of businesses going up. Now, take a look at this little visual right here. This visual, I have cost and revenue equal. What I'm talking about when I make this visual is just these last goods right here, okay? Right where that vertical line is, where that dot is, okay? And again, I'm back to my original price level, right? Price level sub-zero, okay? So right, these last goods that I'm producing, these are goods that we're producing, these last goods, the revenue kind of equals the cost, right? Now, just like up here, right? If we have the original price point, that 10th good, the revenues were pretty equal to cost. And then when that price went up at that 14th good, the revenues equals the cost. But anything before that, right, the revenues were higher than the cost. So all of these goods, I want you to generally think of, hey, when we produce these goods back here, the revenues exceed the cost. And the difference between the revenues and the cost got smaller and smaller and smaller until we got to here. And for these last goods, the revenue equaled the cost. And just to bring that point home, guys, at this particular price level, we wouldn't produce any of these goods over here on this side of this dashed line. Why? Because the cost would exceed the revenues for them, right? Now, again, the price level goes up. We've already established that's the revenues of businesses going up. So let's show those revenues of businesses going up. So for these last goods, now the revenues exceed the cost in the short run. Here's what we got to talk about the short run, right? The short run is that period of time that the cost of production, especially wages, lag behind the changes in revenue. The word is sticky, we often use. While they're sticky, they're not adjusting fully to the revenue changes, to the price level changes, right? The short run is that period of time that our cost of production, like wages, have not fully adjusted to the price level changes. Again, I like to use the word revenue when I'm talking about businesses' production decisions because prices, again, are benefits to the supplier of a good. Prices, of course, are cost to the demander, but to suppliers, they are a benefit. They represent the revenue, right? So the short run, the period of time where the cost of production are lagging behind, are sticky, have not fully adjusted the changes in the price level, the changes in revenue. So when that price level goes up and those costs are lagging behind, it becomes, yes, profitable to produce more, so we will indeed produce more. Now, back to a single product. When the price of a single product goes up, guys, it's not going to put upward pressure on input prices so much that input prices have to fully adjust. Put another way, guys, when the price of a single product goes up, the value of the dollar does not change. But when the price level goes up, that dollar value begins to go down, right? The value of the dollar goes down when that price level goes up. And so, hey, the inputs to production, they're going to see their real income going down. And so they're going to agitate for higher income levels. And so eventually, if the price level goes up, the level of prices of all final goods and services goes up, i.e. that dollar value going down or the value of the dollar going down, we're going to see input prices eventually go up. Costs are eventually going to adjust. When are they going to adjust? In the long run. That's how we define it. We define the long run as that period of time in which cost of production have fully adjusted. So if we're looking at the long run, hey, those costs will fully adjust to those changes in the price level. We'll take a look at that. That's a full adjustment in cost to changes in the price level, changes in revenue. Well, in that particular case, it's not profitable to produce any more, so we won't produce any more when that price level goes up. And so the price level goes up. Yes, my new dot has to be above, but we're not going to produce any more in the long run because in the long run, the costs are fully going to adjust. So I put a dot right above my original dot. I connect those two dots and I get a vertical line and that is my long run air supply curve. Again, guys, in the long run, that's when the, that is the period of time in which cost of production have fully adjusted to the changes in the price level, to the changes in the revenue. So we won't produce any more or any less. Your vertical LRAS 
curve. Now, the next takeaway, what shifts the AS or the SRAS curve, okay? Let's go back to supply again. We now know for sure, right, the supply curve is the marginal cost curve, okay? Now, when price per unit revenue changes, when price changes, we move along a supply curve, right? But what's gonna cause the supply curve itself to shift is a change in the marginal cost of producing, the production cost, that's right. Production cost, the cost side of that profit equation, revenue minus cost equals profit. The cost side is what shifts the curve. Again, price represents the revenue, price changes, pre unit revenue changes cause movement. Changes in the cost of production is going to cause the supply curves to shift. If the marginal cost of the good goes up, if all of a sudden it's now more costly to produce the good, marginal cost shifts up, supply shifts left, okay? If the marginal costs go down, the supply curve shifts to the right. Same thing for the aggregate supply curve. What's gonna shift the aggregate supply curve is the cost of production. Now, what cost of production are we gonna focus on? We're talking about aggregate supply. We're talking about the macro economy. We're talking about the total supply of final goods and services or domestically produced final goods and services, right? What's gonna cause that? Well, it's gotta be cost that pretty much every business incurs. Things like nominal wage, right? Nominal wage is the number one thing that shifts the air spike curve, right? Wages. How many businesses have to pay wages? Pretty much all of them. Another one, energy prices or commodity prices. I like to say energy prices. You might read it as commodity prices. The big commodity we're talking about when we say commodity prices is oil and gas, i.e. energy prices. Guys, everybody's got an energy bill, right? When you produce goods and when you bring them to market, which is what we're doing when we supply goods, is we're producing and bringing to market, takes a lot of energy. So energy prices, right, is a cost of production. Shift the AS curve. Also the regulatory environment, okay? So if we begin to regulate businesses more, that adds cost, shift that AS. Or production technology, if we improve production technology, the cost of production is gonna go down, right? The per unit cost of production is gonna go down. But if it's a game changer, it's like, you know, it's 2023, we're talking a lot about AI, something like AI, that might have the chance to reduce the cost of producing many different goods out there. Hey, that's definitely something that's gonna shift the aggregate supply curve. And then finally, inflationary expectations, right? So if inflationary expectations go up, workers are gonna agitate for higher nominal wages, right? Because hey, if we think the price level's gonna go up by a higher amount uh, in the future than it has been, we need our wages to keep up, our real wages to keep up. So we need the nominal wages to go up by a proportional amount. So we're gonna agitate for them. So those, again, wage changes cause air supply to change. What shifts? The air supply curve, a change in the cost of production, costs that are ubiquitous in our economy. What changes, what shifts the supply curve? Again, changes in the cost of production. I hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.